Awesome. All right. Well, let's get into this. I have, uh, so I, I guess to just set things up last year, you, uh, you did a talk at agency trailblazer live, which ended up being a virtual event because of stupid COVID. Um, but you did a presentation called sell by helping. And as soon as that event like kicked off and after your talk went on, that seemed to be like the talk of the whole event. Like everything I heard from people was, uh, about your talk and how awesome it was. And then the next, like, I don't know, several days, week or so, it was just uh, comments and threads about people trying to tell you, you need to turn this into a course. So uh, I, I'm guessing that's what pushed you over the edge, but I'm glad I'm glad it worked. So is that kind of how it went down? Yeah, so I, I did the talk. It was, um, I was a fairly late addition to the roster, mostly I think because COVID did turn it digital and so there were more spaces. Um, I it was a case of do a talk on whatever you feel comfortable talking about. I'm like, well, I guess the only thing I'm really say that I'm good at is probably my sales process. So I'll talk about that. And so I just kind of tried to put it together into a, um, into like a 25 minute talk. And as I'm going, it, it was really challenging. I had to cut out so much stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, but in the end I got there 25 minutes, it worked. Um, I was really nervous, but everyone seemed to respond really well to it. And you know, when it's like something seems really basic to you, but then you're showing other people and they're like, wow, that's, that's amazing. It's like, really? Like, this is just what I've been doing for the past 15 years. Um, so, um, I didn't think much of it when people responded well. I thought that's great. I felt good about myself, but I didn't think anything. I wasn't like, okay, let me go build a course now. It was, um, people getting results from the stuff I was saying in that meeting, you know, like my friend Noah went and closed the deal like the next day or two days later for like nine grand in one meeting. And I know because a friend that he had been struggling to close recently. Um, and he's like, well, this, this doesn't happen. Um, it was a couple of other people saying how much the talk meant to them. It was, um, like friends saying, dude, this is like course worthy do a course, do a course, do a course. And then one day I think Matt from Funnelbacks um, said, dude, you need to do this, do it right now. And it was like already midnight. And so I just worked until about 4.30 in the morning and I did a landing page, um, connected Thrivecart and um, put it up and sent it to Matt and said, there you go, I did it. And then went to bed and then woke up to all these sales. So that's, yeah, that's it. That's pretty awesome. I, I feel like the things that are that end up being the best kind of happen that way, right? It's not like you woke up and said, uh, you know, I'm going to start, I'm going to go out and make a sales course and, and start selling it. Like it just kind of organically happened that way. And it seems like things uh, turn out better that way. So that's awesome. Yep, I prefer it. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it a little, uh, you know, when I have to plan something like that, like something big and like a course is n- like no small undertaking. I think, uh, once you get into like, okay, the logistics of how to do all this, it's a lot of freaking work. So I think by just yeah. like, you know, uh, having to commit to it first, that's probably a better way to get started. Otherwise, uh, you'd probably set and ponder it forever. So getting that thrive cart page up and running right away is important. Yes. Now uh, that's um, something I've always been taught is you sell and then build. Yeah. And it seems like yep. that's worked well for this too. And yep. uh, yeah, I was, I was part of that pre-sale. I think I bought it that night, probably when you, you went to sleep. I was one of those. You, I think you were to... number two. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Like the second sale. I was like, holy crap. Yeah. Carl, so, so I, uh, I actually went through the course kind of as you were building it. So you released it you know, as, as you were building it out. So I went through it that way. I'm the kind of person that likes to go everything through everything, like on two times speed at one setting. Cause that's how my brain can absorb it all. So what I did last week, uh, in preparation for this call was go through the entire course now that it's finished all at one time. And so I've kind of prepared a few questions. It's only like four questions, but they're long, uh, just for us sure. to kind of dive into some of these things. So the course is really broken up into mindset, uh, understanding education, and closing. Uh, So I've kind of got one question within each one of those categories where we can kind of talk through these things. So my my goal here is obviously if people are interested in this information, they can go to the adminbar.com forward slash SBH for like sell by helping. Uh, They can go check out your course. They can use the coupon code, the admin bar and save 20%. Um, But even if they don't want to purchase the course, I think there's going to be lots of good information in here. I tried to like 
extract everything I could to say, what would this be really valuable as just on its own without even buying it? So even if you're not interested in the course, I think you're in the right place to learn a few things today. So the first thing I want to talk about is kind of that mindset shift. So I think, um, you know, sometimes naming things, I, I've always found naming things is really, really hard, but you've pretty much nailed the entire concept of uh, your philosophy to selling uh, by calling this course Sell by Helping, because that's really what it's about. So one thing you talked about and something that really I identified with uh, as I was going through the beginning parts of this course is all the, the pressure that comes from a sales meeting. So you get in there, you kind of have to amp yourself up before you, you know, now it's all on Zoom pretty much, but before you, I would walk into a meeting or even on a Zoom call, it's kind of like... I don't know, you have to amp yourself up and you feel like you have to actually sell something by the end of that meeting for that meeting to be successful. So when you leave, you either feel great, this person's on board or shit, I didn't do it, you know? And this this pressure for me usually manifests in me being nervous, talking too much, uh, maybe even sometimes, I, I'm not one to brag much, but I think when I get in that uh, like pressure situation, I'm kind of defensive in a way that probably comes off as bragging. But mm. in, in your course, you talk about the mindset being the objective of the sales meeting really isn't to sell, it's rather just to help them. So I wanted to know a little bit about how you see this, how you see the difference in between going into a meeting trying to sell and going into a meeting trying to help. And if you think that's a better strategy for you as the salesperson, or if you think it's a better strategy for your client or everybody together. So that's a long question, but uh, I think you right. kind of see where I'm going with all that. Gotcha. Cool. So basically um, the main mindset shift. Okay. So when I first started in a sales role, um, I had to go out and sell admin work being done offshore. But this is like, I don't know, more than 10 years ago and like maybe 15 almost. There was no Dropbox. There was no cloud. Like software wasn't really like there was no SaaS. Right. Um, yeah, you know, not, nothing really worked in the cloud. Everything was physical. So admin work had to happen at your office, like bookkeeping and data entry. So I would go in and I'd have a meeting with people and um, the boss was like, this is how it works. This is what you need to, you know, basically sell, 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 sell. So I'd go in and I'd get super nervous, just like you. I'd ramble, I'd talk at them. Mm -hmm. um, and my mindset was... I need to convince these people to hire us. And I know they don't want to because they want someone to come into their office, right? Like they're looking for a cheap option, which is why they called us because we were cheaper, but that was because we were doing work offshore. Um, and so I had all this story in my head and I was really nervous about it. And it manifested exactly how you said, you know, you get a bit defensive, um, you, you ramble, don't get to the point and you can tell they're not, they're not interested. And as soon as you say something, you see they react, you know, say something that you, maybe they're not going to like and you're a bit nervous about it, and you see them reacting like, damn it, like, and it goes worse and you get worse. Um, and then one day um, I was, went to a sales meeting and I went, you know what? I don't care. Um, and so I just started talking to the people, just had a, having a conversation. Now it's a lot easier to have a conversation than it is to try to convince someone of something. So I was asking about their business and how they do things. And I just went like, well, you know, you can flip a few things and make it work this way. And they're like, oh, actually that's, that's great. Like, wouldn't that help you guys? And they're like, yeah, that would. I'm like, cool. Well, I mean, so, and I started outlining a solution of how they could change things in their business. So it was different to what they'd been doing. Um, and they were just like, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Like, what, you know, how do we work with you? And then I explained how we do things and they're like, yeah, that's great. No problem. Um, and they paid us. Um, and I was like, holy, holy crap, that, that went amazing. And that was like the first sale where I went, I wasn't selling and I got a sale. Um, and then my, my close rate of like successful meetings went from like, like 10% or something like five to 10% to like. I think it was every second or third meeting that was signing up, you know, and keep in mind, I had to convince them of doing work offshore at a time that was, that was not done right. and there was no cloud, there's no Dropbox. So it was, it was a hard sell. Um, so for me to close half the meetings was amazing. And that's because I was going in and I was doing a solution based thing. And I realized that like, you can't go in and try to sell. Like if you try to sell, you have an outcome in mind that you need to need to happen for it to be successful. You know, you have an objective. Your objective mm -hmm. is close the deal, convince, manipulate. And that has a lot of pressure. 
So if instead you're like, well, look, let me have a conversation with someone, get to know them. Let me see what they're trying to achieve and see if I can help them out and find them a solution, even if it isn't like me. And there were times where I was like, look, this is what we do, but I don't think it's going to be right for you. I think you actually need someone physically to come here. Here's what I recommend you do. And you feel better because you're giving them a solution. And so they walk away with the right solution, which helps them a lot. Um, and you get to go into meetings with a lot less pressure um, and you get to close more often. Like you get to get deals over the line uh, more often without trying to do anything convincing and manipulative and whatever. Um, if all you care about is getting the sale, then when there's like shady stuff, like where you can do like, you know, you read those books about persuasion tactics and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like you start using those because well, all you care about is getting the sale. You don't care about getting the sale a certain way. You don't, you don't care about um, doing the right thing by people. You just care about getting the sale, whether it's right for them or not. And I've had employees who have had that approach. Um, and it was really difficult because their clients would go up and down. Like they'd have times they'll, they'll go crazy, but then the clients would leave really quickly. Um, it usually wasn't the best solution for them. It wasn't a fun situation. Um, so the whole sell by helping approach works a lot easier for all of us involved yeah and i think i think too i would go into those sales meetings when i was actively going into these meetings to try to sell with almost like an agenda of like i need to tell them about this and this and why we're better for this and why this is you know uh so i wanted to put all those things into place and when you go in there and, and that kind of adds to that anxiety and pressure too is like you know, uh, now I have to talk because I have to get all these points in. And if they're talking too much, I can't say everything I need. You know, I can't sell them on everything I need to sell them on. But when you go in there kind of with just a open mind about, you know, this person is looking for help in an area that I might be able to help them. And I'm just going to answer questions and kind of tell them, uh, you know, what I think would work best for them. There's none of that agenda built into all of it. And I think we're all, you know, all to a point guilty of like, um, like imposter syndrome, especially we spend a lot of times inside this group where there's tons of people that know way more about everything we're talking about than I do. So sometimes when I, you know, offer, um, you know, some advice or a suggestion or something, somebody come back and say, well, that's not right because of X, Y, and Z. Uh, and somebody will school me on that, you know, not in a, not in a rude way, but um, so, so I often feel like maybe I don't know enough to answer all these questions. But when you're talking to business owners that don't do this for a living, you're not talking to the, you know, the experts, you know, that are inside of our group. Um, you probably know a whole lot more than you think you know. So just being able to like, I don't know, there was a post in the group yesterday where somebody, um, Somebody was kind of running somebody through what they'd need to do for SEO and stuff, a client. Um, and it's just amazing that things that might seem common knowledge to us, to most of our, our customers and clients, to them, that's going to be a revelation, you know? Yeah. Um, we, it's actually something I've said always through, um, so I used to train salespeople. Um, and so like in, in business, uh, businesses I worked at and when I did coaching as well. And one of the things that I like, one of the first lessons was always like, you're the expert. You're going into a meeting with someone. You're the expert. There's a reason why you're talking to them. It isn't, you're not, you know, if they're hiring you for a website, they're not a high-end web designer who's getting you to build their website, right? They're a business owner who's getting you to build their website. And that's what you do for a living. Therefore, you are the professional. So make sure that you have that in your mind, that you know more than they do. You're the expert. Run things the way you want it to be run. Um, don't let them bully you around or anything like that. Yeah. So I, th I just think like for me, that was the first light bulb in this course was like just re get rid of all that pressure of like having to ever go into a sales meeting needing to sell something like you're just you're really just uh, having a conversation with somebody. You know, you're just seeing having a conversation. If, yeah. Yep. If you're a good help or, or if you're a good fit to be able to help or not. All right, so we've kind of set that up as as the mindset. We're not going to be thinking of these sales meetings as sales meetings, but more just a, a conversation with somebody where you don't have that pressure uh, to kind of persuade somebody to do something. So the next module in this is really focused around understanding. So this is having a lot to do with asking them questions. So you talk about kind of what questions to ask, 
how to ask these questions, how to dig deeper, but they're not really questions about their potential website or whatever, whatever service you're offering for them. It's not specifics around like features or anything like that, but more about the problems that they're experiencing that led, led them to contact you in the first place, right? Like something had to happen that made them reach out to you. Uh, They just didn't magically appear in front of you. So where, where I'm kind of wanting to go with this is if, if a client has already had some kind of issue and just, we'll just use websites because I think everybody in here is familiar with, you know, delivering a website, right? So if a client's already faced an issue, um, their old website sucks, they don't have a website yet, whatever it may be. And they've already come to the decision. They need a new website and that's why they've come to you. Um, they're already in that place of, I need to buy a website. Why do you think it's important to, force them almost or, you know, or really dig in deep to understanding what led them to that decision. So, um, instead of just leaning into, okay, you need a website, here's all the website things we can build. Why do you want to step back and get to all those problems? If you think, if, if they already think a website's the solution. Cool. Well, I think you just right there at the end, you got it right. So they think a website is the solution. And so if all you do is someone comes to you when they need something and say, I need a website and build it, then all you're doing is you're providing a commodity service, just like anyone else. Like I can build a website, you can build a website. Probably every single person who's watching this, whenever they watch it, whether it's watching live now, watching tomorrow, watching next week, can build a website. Dude, like kids can go and build websites. I, like, I taught it's my not hard. 10 year old how to build a website. Right? Yeah. It's not hard. Anyone can build a website. So if all you do is build a website when someone asks you to, you're just there to take orders, right? They could go to Fiverr and do the same thing. Um, really, we don't know if the website or a website is going to be the right solution to their problem. So we need to find out what the problem is first. Um, we we ask the questions to identify you know what situation they're in what's happening what's going on why they approach us what do they actually want to happen and then it's like cool yeah you do need a website but you need to make sure your website has one two three features or whatever it needs to be done a certain way in order for that to work um because yeah if if all you're doing is just like taking orders then you're that's when you know when people say like um they've said a lot in the group I don't understand how people can charge five thousand dollars plus for a website. Like I, I don't have anyone willing to pay me more than two grand. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, if what happens when someone comes to you and says, "Hey, I need a website," how much? And then you say, "Okay, well, it's going to be ten grand." They go, "Like everyone else is two grand." Right. Of course, that's what's going to happen because you haven't done anything to differentiate. All you, all you've done is taken an order, and you're a commodity. Like you go to buy groceries, right? Like you, you go to buy bread. There's different breads. You can buy different breads, but it's like there's a certain point that you're willing to spend. Like for me, it's like three dollars fifty or four dollars or something like that for a rye bread. And it's like if there's a bread for ten dollars, I'm not going to buy it because it's not worth that much to me. But hey, you know what? If they presented it in a different way, um, maybe I would consider it. Or, or right, if they're still, you know, I, I think the bread analogy is strange, but uh, maybe a good one. So <laughs> let's say you had uh, some kind of. Uh, dietary restriction or you found out you had some kind of health issue and you needed a certain kind of bread well gluten you're free. willing to pay a whole lot bread. more for that that more expensive right? bread because it's solving the yep. problem you're facing yeah and hey you know what if i'm going in and i want the bread because i'm hungry and you're like dude don't buy a loaf of bread because you're hungry go go buy a pre-made meal that you can heat up and eat straight away so, oh, cool. I'll go spend a hell of a lot more for that pre-made meal than like, you know, I was going to pay $4 for the bread, but I'll pay $10 for the meal. Right. So I've gone in with a problem, which was hunger. And you've gone and I said, give me bread. You're like, well, why do you want bread? Well, no, that's the wrong, sol- <laughs> that's the wrong solution. man. like, so that's, that's kind of it, right? You understand. And it could be that the bread, bread is right, but you need to let them know what kind of bread. So if I want bread because um, I'm hungry, but I've also got a gluten intolerance. You're going to say like, dude, go get the gluten-free bread. Right. Um, it tastes like crap, but that's the one you need. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's a bit more expensive. And it's like, cool, but that will solve the problem that you have, right, of the hunger, but, you know, compensating for the, the gluten intolerance. This, yeah, that's kind of it. This talking about bread feels like very uh, uh, Australian dry sense of humor, and I like it. I like it. I like the way this is happening. Well, it's also, it's it's after midnight, so my brain isn't going to be uh, firing I, as well as it honestly, would. Honestly, I, I think it works. I think it works. Yep. There, 
you, you do talk about kind of in this this education part too something that I first kind of heard this analogy in uh, Blair Inn's book uh, Win Without Pitching was is kind of that physician uh, analogy. So if somebody comes to the doctor and says, hey, I need, you know, such and such medicine, the doctor doesn't just write a prescription and hand it to you without asking any questions. He's gonna say, well, why do you think you need that? And let's look at it. And then he's gonna make sure, you know, either he's gonna agree with you and say, yeah, that probably is the right solution for your problem, or actually you're not diagnosing this correctly because you're not a doctor uh, and you need something completely different. So mm. it kind of works the same way with the website too. And, and just yeah. making sure that asking those questions is making sure they're diagnosing the problem right. And so when you talk about kind of the the problem of I can only sell, you know, people are only willing to pay $1,000 or $2,000 and stuff. I, I think what you talk about that's really handy in this course and one note I made was really understanding the size and scope of their problem lets you respond to that with a proportionate sized solution. So if their problem is I don't have a website and I want one, well, you know, websites are pretty cheap. You can get hosting for a few dollars and you can spin up something for free. Like solving that problem of I don't have a website and I want a website proportionately, that's a really cheap solution. But if they have a big problem, like uh, I just started this business and it's really competitive and I'm moving into a new location and I need to be able to find customers quickly. Well, now we're talking about, we got to do SEO and we need to get them listed on a bunch of things. And there's just a whole lot more that goes into it. That's a bigger problem. So we're going to need proportionately a bigger solution to fix it. So do you think I understood that part, right? Yeah, definitely. Look, it's, um, that's one of the one of the biggest factors in um, when you're when you're finding a solution for someone is the right solution. And so, if someone wants a site and they're like, "Well, because I'm starting out, and I just want a website," um, I wouldn't leave it there though. I would ask why. Um, so, why do you think you need one? Do you like what impact is that going to have if you don't have one? Um, so, I always want to find out like, is it worth anything? You know, if someone says, "Well, if I don't have a website, I know I'm not going to be able to land these ten thousand dollar deals." I'm like, okay, well, how often do you think they're going to come around? It's like, well, you know, there's probably one every month. So we're talking about a hundred grand potentially you could miss if you didn't have a website. Um, and so, so now we're starting to put some numbers onto it and it's like, okay, cool. So it is worth something. It's worth potentially a hundred grand to have a website um, that you could have missed out on if you didn't have it. Cool. So, you know, if we're talking about a hundred grand worth of, of services, you probably don't want to go and cheap out too much because there's a chance that it, you know, it might not work. Yeah, that, and even that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that. I would ask them if they think that, Yeah. do you think that a bad website could Im impact on that? Yeah. And then when they say, well, yeah, of course, if the website's ugly, like I probably won't get those $10,000 projects either. It's like, cool. So we need a good website and say, yeah, of course. Great. So they've told you they need a good website. They've told you it's worth a hundred grand um, worth of revenue. And so, you know, when you're like, well, why do you want to cheap out and spend $500? So, well, because I'm just starting out. It's like, but we're talking about a hundred grand, man. Like it's not, you know, it's not nothing, you know, and you know that a bad website, you just told me a bad website would impact it. Um, so it's, it's getting them to tell you what this stuff is. Um, that's why the understanding phase is so important because you're asking them the questions. They're giving you the answers. They like, you walk them through the process of telling you, here's what's wrong. Here's how much damage it's doing to me right now. Here's, um, you know, here's what I'd like to happen and here's what, you know, where I think it could end up if we do this properly. Um, and then you're like, well, you know, here's the worst case and here's the best case. And that difference is the value that the service will bring to them. Um, yeah. And that just, that, that gives you the opportunity to be able to charge more because you know, you know how big that problem is, you know, how big of a solution they're going to need to solve that problem. And so that, that leads us nicely into kind of the education phase. So that's the next module inside the course. And I actually pulled yep. a quote out of this. We should put it on like a fancy background and like put your name underneath it and put it on Twitter or okay. something when we're done with this. But I, I pulled a quote out of here because this to me was something that really stood out in there. And so in the course, you said, uh, and I did paraphrase, a I, I cut a little bit out so it would be nice and crisp here, but uh, it says, cool. when people take cheap, crappy options, it's usually because they just don't know any better. Your job is to take those options away. We teach them better so they know better and they make the right decisions. And for me, that was, that was kind of one of these like, 
uh, light bulb moments and you talk about light bulb moments in the course too, in the, in the context of having your customers have those light bulbs go off. But for me, this was a huge light bulb of like why this whole process of educating your customers is so important because I don't think most clients that come to me and have a low budget are just cheap or, you know, some of them are, but I don't think they're necessarily coming to me because, because they're cheap. They don't realize all that goes into something, how big their problem is, what what all things a website could help them solve or help them do. So that education part of it is so important in in helping them eliminate all the bad options out there, like going to Fiverr or whatever it may be. So um, I guess first, do you think I understood that that kind of uh, yeah. quote I pulled correctly? Spot on, right? That that was exactly correct so what we're doing um, when people come in and they say like anything you, you mention anything i say to you if i say how much is a guitar worth right you're probably gonna say well it depends on the guitar but you know if i say a specific model like a fender stratosphere whatever i don't know i don't know i'm, I'm guessing a guitar you're name close. i think it's close. <laughs> close yeah right so whatever it is right a fender something um you'll have an idea of what that's worth right if i say how much is um you know how much is a CRM worth? CRM tool, right? How much is you know um, a book worth? Whatever, like I can say say things, and you're going to have a price in your head. Someone else will have a price, and it could be different. And you're both correct because value is determined by the person who's buying. So it's what you would pay, and that's the value to you. And the problem is people have a perceived value. So we all have a perceived value of what something is worth. And it, like, we're correct, but our basis of doing that may not be 100% there. And you can change that perceived value by giving them more information. Now, you can guide them to a different uh, perception. So, you know, you, you talk about, let's say, um, we talk about a guitar and how much the guitar is worth. And then we find out that it's actually um, the same guitar that's used by all the celebrities. It's... Um, you know, this specific guitar was used by some famous musician and it comes with some extra stuff in there. And it's like, oh, you know what? Actually, this is worth heaps. This is a collector's edition and it's probably worth 10 times the actual price of a guitar, right? So um, you, you're as part of the process, um, some of the understanding phase by asking questions, you're already getting them to start seeing um, the, the the value could be different, right? Why do they think a website's worth two grand? Well, because the last website they built was two grand because everyone they've spoken to has told them it's going to be two grand. Like, so that's their perception. Um, but that's for a website, which is a commodity, right? That's their, they, they have a preconceived notion of what a website is and what it does and what it's going to achieve for them. Um, if you can change that uh, preconception, and you can educate them on, which is this next phase, is you educate them on, you know, why normally, like what they really need from a website, like the real problem they're facing, what they really need from a website, what other people generally will get wrong when they build websites, mm -hmm. why they or why their previous website didn't work. They start seeing like, hang on, hang on a sec. These people have no frigging idea what they're talking about. They're telling me two grand. Like there's no way that anyone can do a proper job for two grand. Um, you know, look at look at what what's involved here. Like these people, yeah, they'll say two grand, but but the steps they're following are, are crazy. You know, and or they could be doing it the same way, but they don't have the same knowledge. So you start to differentiate by educating them, and it's not educating them on like, hey, here's why we're so awesome. It's like legitimate stuff, right? Don't forget, we're like we're not trying to manipulate or anything. We're we're not like we're not rubbishing competitors or anything like that. What we are doing is we're just letting them know this is how it works. So you have a problem. I actually I've got an example. Um, there was, and this was a crazy one because it was one of those two grand people, like who think they, they wanted to spend two grand, um, and it ended up being a thirteen grand website. Um, I didn't actually get it, and that was because I made this massive mistake. But I'll save that for the end. <laughs> um, so like we all make mistakes. So um, this guy uh, I knew he bought a kitchen. Um, kitchen installation company right so you know kitchens aren't cheap like their cheapest kitchen was like seven grand um and so he came um and met with me wanted to talk about his website and he was like look i need to polish it up a bit like i took it over i know it's a little bit amateur and i want to make it look a little bit more professional i've got two grand to spend um what can you do for me and i was like well 
why do you want it to look more polished? And he's like, well, you know, we want to, I want to get more business. And I was like, all right, like, like what, what sort of business do you want to get? What business do you get now? And he was like, oh, well, we normally get a lot of the low end, like bottom of the end of the market people and they, they want to haggle on price and this and that. And, and he was like just ranting about the people at the bottom end. And I said, so who are the like ideal clients? It's like, oh, they're sort of more mid-tier. Like they, they live in sort of the richer suburbs. They're a bit more professional. Um, you know, husband and wives, usually the wives look at it first and they bring the husband in later and they say, this is what I want and the husband pays for it. And they're like twenty five to $60,000 kitchens. I was like, cool. So... So do you want more of them? And it was like, yeah, of course. Like uh, ideally, that's that's what we're trying to get. Yeah, that's why I wanted you, you to polish up the site. And I said, and so then I started running him through like, look, man, the, the problem with this site is is more than just some polish. Like, and I explained like the brand. I explained the um, you know, like the how how design influences things. I said this is a very masculine thing, and really, you need something's going to appeal to the women as well because they're going to probably come here first. The 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 kind of the, the board housewives, like the, the stereotypical like rich wife's at home and does nothing kind of a, I mean, does nothing sounds terrible. I don't mean does nothing, but you know, uh, maintains the house and, and has a social life. Like they're, they're rich, like, you know, right. kind of richer, richer people. Right. Um, and so it's like, we need to appeal to these people. And like your, your current site doesn't do that and I explained why. And it's like, Oh wow. Like, okay, cool. This, so what do we, what do we do? Like do a new one? He goes, I think we should do a new one. I'm like, great. Okay. You want to do a new site? I agree. I think it's a good. I think it's a good move. And I started educating him on what the new site needs. And so we'd already run through what had happened with his old site and why it wasn't working. Um, you know, the real problem is you've got this site that doesn't appeal to your target market. It looks kind of at the cheaper end. So you're getting the cheaper end people. You make if if you have something instead that kind of looks higher end and appeals to the target audience that you want, you're going to get more of them inquiring. You're going to put off a few of the cheaper people. But that's okay because you need 10 of them to get one, the right. worth of one good client. Um, and you don't want them anyway. You just spent 20 minutes ranting about how terrible they are. Um, and so it's like, and this is great. And so like, you know, what do we do now? It's like, okay, cool. So I said, look, this is how I work and this is how my business works and, you know, our processes. And this is why we deliver a good result. And then I gave him a price of $13,000. And he's like, you know what? I think I might be crazy, but I want to do it. Let's do it. I was like, great. I didn't get the sale. Because I'd known this guy, I knew he took over the business, and I thought it was just him. I didn't ask if anyone else was involved in the business. He had a business partner, and when he said I need to get my business partner to say yes, I was like, damn. Like you know, this guy thinks the size two grand. What's his business partner going to think? Probably the same thing. Right. If I had them both there, I would have had them both <laughs> over the line. Instead, I said, look, don't worry about telling your business partner anything. Get him to come meet with me and we'll do this. We'll go through this again. <laughs> please, please come back. Um, and he said, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. And then he called me like three days later. He said, oh, I spoke to my business partner. And he looked at me like I was the biggest idiot and said, you're on drugs. There's no way we're spending 13 grand on a website. Um, but I had him, you know. So if I didn't if I didn't mess up by forgetting to find out like that, you know, was there anyone else involved in this decision? Um, I would have got him to go from spending two grand to getting to spending 13 on a website. Um so yeah, that's that's kind of the, the how the education works. Yeah, and I think I think we've all probably gone through this in our own business, right? So when we first started um, building websites, we did it for you know five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, whatever it may be, wherever your first project was. Um, my first one, I found the invoice a while back. It was like three hundred dollars, right? And it's still at that time, I thought, well, you know, it's not that much work. It's few, you know, this many hours, and I'm. And over time, I started realizing, well, that's because I wasn't doing this and I wasn't doing that, and I had to come back and fix these things, or none of this worked because I didn't plan for all this. And so as I started getting Getting more educated in the industry, I started realizing, well, I have to charge a lot more to be able to do these things. So if your prices have gone up over time, uh, you can probably account a lot of that to the education you've like given yourself in just experience of doing this. So, you know, when you think of it that way in my prices are more now because I know more and I do more, uh, you, you have to get your clients to that same point. So you have to help them. They're starting off at that same point where it was the $500 website, right? So you kind of have to speed up that process for them by using your experience and explaining, you know, the downsides of some of those, uh, cheap, easy, fast solutions and, you know, uh, what the, you know, what they really need to be able to accomplish their goals. So I think that that education part obviously is 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 really helpful. But 
that quote really stood out to me is just uh, taking away those bad options and teaching them better so they can make better decisions, which I thought was uh, you, you have a really you have a duty, you have a duty, right? Like if you know that they're going to go and get ripped off, like there are so many in our industry, in the web industry and in SEO as well and pay-per-click, there are so many people who have horror stories of getting ripped off as because 99% of the time they're cheaped out. Not always, but almost always, they cheaped out. They went to the cheapest option. I had someone that I was speaking to earlier this week tell me about they had a quote for SEO for $50 a month. I was like, no. And she's like, what do you mean no? I'm like, then that's not SEO. They're not doing anything for that. Um, they're charging you 50 bucks. They might put you on something, on a register or something maybe, um, but they're not actually doing any SEO work for 50 bucks. Um, but she, she was like, oh, I thought it was a great deal. <laughs> Like, well, I mean, you know, if they were doing SEO, yes. Uh, if they're doing anything that was going to help your ranking, sure. Um, but like, you know, I was like, in comparison, I charge $1,500 a month as a base um, and they're charging 50, like, and I know what's involved and I know that I'm not making a lot of money doing SEO at the moment and I need to raise my prices. So what the hell are they doing for 50 bucks? Right. And, and um, maybe isn't necessarily you know. a case of her being a cheap person. You know, she just really didn't yeah. understand that no. $50 is never going to do anything in SEO. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's like that's that's where the education came in. Now, I don't care if she goes and uses me or not. Um, you know, and she doesn't need to use me for SEO or anything like that. But I just don't want her to use the $50 option right. because I know that she's going to do that for like six months and then go, man, nothing's happening. And then she's lost six months of potential growth because she went to a crap option. Like I've got an obligation. You know, my my thing is to help, right? I want to help her. Doesn't need to help to line my pocket or anything. I need to help to make sure that they get the right outcome. So making sure that they don't use a bad option is half of half of what I want to happen. Yeah, the other and, half is for them to use the right option, which is hopefully me. Right. And, and those people yeah. are also the ones that... Uh, six months down the road, she would say SEO doesn't work, you know, because of yeah. her experience with SEO, right? So yeah, I want to be I want to be mindful of your time here. I know we're sure. going pretty long, but I do want to get to cool. this. Uh, the last module here inside the course is talking about closing, and closing gotcha. is bordering on those words that I promised in my Facebook post you wouldn't say. Um, but I think a lot of people, when they hear closing, they thought they think about like that always be closing mentality, like the yep. sleight of hand. What are you going to, yeah. how are you going to trick somebody into saying yes and getting their money so you can yeah. get out of there, you know? And so, yeah. Do in, you want it in, in red or in blue? Right. Right. And so in, in your course, you really talk about how the closing phase of the meeting is really uh, a continuation of the education process where you're going to talk about kind of um, the logistics of how things would work if they move forward with you, kind of your processes and stuff like that, uh, handle any of the objections they have. So if they're worried about this or that or the, the budget or the price or whatever uh, that may be, you kind of handle those objections and you have some awesome, uh, really, really practical ways to do that inside the course. We probably don't have time for those in here, but uh, really, really good stuff. Uh, and then kind of educating them on the next steps to get to, to move forward. So for me, I've never like had a, this is how I'm going to close the meeting process or like even really thought like the meeting's over when we're done talking and then uh, I go away. Um, but I was wondering if you could just fairly quickly and from a high level kind of tell us what that closing phase of the meeting looks like, like if you just had to kind of uh, give us a, a typical scenario. Yeah. But a typical scenario is like, um, you know, we've just educated them on what they really need to happen. And they're like, yeah, this is great. What do I do? Like, what's next? And it's like, cool. Well, look, I can help you with this. Um, if you're interested and like, yeah, of course I am. Like, that's why I'm talking to you. Cool. Well, this is how it would work. And you just run through your process, you know, first, like we need to do this for this reason. And you need to justify every step of the process because you want them to understand that I can't take these things away. This is necessary. Um, you know, like, cause this is what, where people cut corners and this goes wrong. And so here's why I can't cut this corner. So you just run through the process. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. Um, this is the, how long it's going to take. This is the time frames of it and all stuff like that. And then once you run through that and you make sure they understand, you just give them the price and say, cool, this is how, how much it's going to cost, or this is the investment that you need to make for this to happen. Um, and, you know, using investments is usually good. Sometimes it comes across as tacky. So you just got to use it in a way that's natural to you. If it doesn't feel natural, don't do it because people can tell when you're being like slimy, like doing sure. stuff on purpose, like a tactic. So just do whatever feels right. Um, I can use the word 
um, investment because it's just how I look at it. Like this is an investment. Um, this isn't like a fee. You're not paying me like a fee. You're paying an investment into your business. Um, this is an asset that should generate a return uh, because that's kind of my focal point. Um, and, and you so you give them a fee. And, believe that, yeah. so it's easy to, to yeah. say that, right? Um, and and then like you give them a fee. Usually that usually that goes straight into objection handling, uh, but that's usually the next step. Is then um, so it's not closing. It's education, right? I've just literally just educated them about the logistics of what I'm going to do and how it's going to cost. And then they're going to have potentially have some questions and I've got to do more education by answering their questions, but answering in a way that resolves any potential issues or challenges or whatever. Um, and then once we do that, then the next step of education, closing slash education part two, is letting them know what happens next. And as long as it's easy to move forward um, and everything else is OK and they, they have no objections left, you just make sure it's very easy for them to move forward. Don't ask them to do like jump through hoops to start work. Right. Sending people to a crazy form that has like it's going to take them hours. You're going to lose people at that starting point, man. Make it easy. Anything that is going to get in the way of you getting paid, like getting a sign off and a deposit, um, leave that until after. Right. Even if it's necessary, just leave it till after you've been paid and there's a deposit um, unless it's going to prevent you from getting paid or getting your deposit. Like get contracts signed like that's that is a friction point but it's a necessary friction point because otherwise you're going to get in trouble eventually um but yeah, we've, outside we've of that had people like, on the podcast tell us uh, i think when we had the guy from better proposals on tell like as soon as you're done with the meeting like pull out the proposal write it send it right then you know don't don't wait yeah. you know there's, I'll send you the there's proposal different strategies there's different there's different strategies like there there are ways you can kind of send it like by the end of the week and have you have a bit of a process with communication in the gap but you generally you want it quick because they have strong mind share and so you know this is our life like our livelihood is our lives like selling websites and doing websites and all that so it's really important to us and it controls a lot of our mind but as the business owner, if they're a big business owner, unless it's a major, major problem, they're probably not spending 100% of their time thinking about it like we are. Right. And so, you know, for you, it's a big deal. You do this proposal and you send it off. But after they walked out of the meeting, they had another 100 things go wrong in their business, you know, and they've had meetings and, and whatever. So they're not really, yeah. So it's like, you know, so you send a thing and like they haven't looked at it. It's been two days. They hate me. They're not going to do it. No, they, they, it's literally been two days. I don't look at emails like all the time. I have stuff that's flagged from like, six weeks ago still that is important and urgent and i need to get to but it's six weeks old because i'm i have a business and i have so many different things that are on my plate and that thing was important to the person that sent it to me but has a very low mind share for me and so that's what happens with prospects and, and potential clients is they'll look at it six weeks later and be like yeah awesome i'm pumped let's go and you're like i thought you were gone i was about to send the magic i was about to send the magic email right there to get lost right um but it's not. It's just because of the mind share. And so the more important and more urgent and more expensive the problem is, the more likelihood it will have a larger share of their mind. Um, but you'll be surprised at, um, especially when you start dealing with the bigger businesses, like how little, it, you know, these things matter to them. You know, and it's like, cool, you know, send it through. My secretary will, will review it in like two weeks and then show me. Like <laughs> that's, you know, it, it happens. But you know that that's just part of the process right so it's um you you run through logistics give them a price handle objections give them next steps you send your proposal and there you go you got your client yep Hopefully. and i think that that just makes i think the whole thing this course gave me was just like uh a lot more permission to be myself and just do what i would do naturally instead of like <laughs> having we as business owners especially as people who run an agency by themselves like by definition, we have to do a lot of things like today's the last day of the month. Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing bookkeeping. Like I know I'm going to have to do all that tomorrow. And tomorrow, I'm a bookkeeper, not a web designer. Um, I don't really like being a salesperson. Like if that, I would never apply for a job where the title was salesperson. However, hmm. uh, you can tell by the amount of time I spend inside this group talking to people like I don't mind helping people out and answering questions and sharing yep. whatever knowledge I have or, or helping pass them along. There's been plenty of people that have come to me asking about something and I help connect them with the right person. Like doing those things is totally natural to my personality. And it's also a very genuine response uh, where I feel like a lot of like quote unquote sales techniques aren't that they're like having to no. do something that's not natural to you. That's it's, it is unnatural. And that's the problem. And that's why a lot of, web 
professionals struggle because they're not natural salespeople, you know, and I don't like, and to be honest, I don't think much of someone who's a natural salesperson because usually it's another word for slimy asshole. Um, so, you know, we, we, we design stuff, right? We develop, we use code, we, we do all these different things. We not like the types, usually we're not the types that go out and like, can like charm the pants off like a, a, an executive board, right? Sometimes we are good on you if you can, but most of us aren't really like that. We're just normal people. Um, but a lot of these courses and a lot of sales training, it kind of tries to give you techniques and processes and steps that aren't natural to you. They're trying to put you in a box. Mm -hmm. And realistically, this course isn't that different. Like it's also putting you in a box, but the box it's putting you in is kind of the box that I like to be in. And I hope that other people like that approach too. Um, and so it's like, hey, here's an alternative that is a bit of a different approach um, that, but also works, right? Like you don't have to be a slimy person to get sales. Like you can get sales. You can get them for high, high ticket, like high dollar values too. Um, you know, high, high profit, like I'm talking like $14,000 for a brochure site, you know, 12, 14, um, I think 14 for just a basic brochure is the highest, like, you know, in terms of profit ba based on work, um, that I've got, but you know, like 20 grand for e-commerce, um, membership sites for 40, like this is all doable without being slimy or sleazy or snaky or anything like that. Um, it's just being a good person and helping and not trying to pitch and do stuff that isn't natural to you. Find what works for you and it will work. Well, just think about if your friend came to you for advice, you would just help them in the most genuine way. You, you give them the best advice you can. And if that ended up in something that also helped you, fine, but that's not your objective. You would just, this is how you naturally act as a human being, right? So just act that same way, but with clients. Like it, it's, yeah. it, it's very, very simple, but it's very, very hard to like, uh, like think of things that way. Cause you're just so programmed to like, I need to go in here and sell stuff. But really, if you just took it like you would any other conversation, uh, it becomes a whole lot easier. So, well, Nick, I really appreciate you jumping on here and doing this, especially at the, uh, the time of morning it is for you. Happy Thursday to you. Um, Thank you. You'll have to you have to sleep in tomorrow. But I do want to tell everybody if they go to the admin com forward slash SBH as in sell by helping, they can see the sales page for Nick's course. Um, it was it, it's due to be at four hundred dollars. It was due to be at four hundred dollars tomorrow, the first, which it's already the first for Nick. Um, but I asked him and he was kind enough to extend that to Sunday. Um so we could get this out and kind of share this with people. So there is a little bit of a, a time constraint there if you want to save the money on here. Um, so I'm not going to put up to 400 just as a heads up. Okay. Like I don't like a lot of people. Um, so I'm going to put up to 300 because I know COVID is still a big factor for a lot of businesses. There are some people who are like crushing it now and they're picking up a lot of work, but there's still heaps who are struggling. Um, they've had they've lost, you know, half the client base or all their client base. Um, they've had projects not go ahead. Um, that did happen to me. I had a couple of projects that didn't go ahead um, and uh, one or two businesses that actually went out of business for a while. Um, so I know what it's like and I know some people are still suffering from it. So I didn't feel right going to 400 straight off the bat. So it's um, on the Sunday, whatever it is, it's going to go up to 300. Um, so no, yeah, not crazy, but still, yeah, an extra sure. hundred dollars. Um, and then once, once we know that like most of the world's vaccinated, um, <laughs> then I'll be putting it up to 400. Okay, perfect. I, I appreciate yep. you correcting me that. So yes, uh, if you go by Sunday, you'll still have the $200 price and he's given us a coupon code, uh, the admin bar, all one word. I don't think it matters if you do upper or lowercase. I think it makes it all uppercase by default. Uh, but just type in the admin bar. You can save an extra 20% off of that, which I greatly appreciate you uh, doing that for us. So is there anything that I missed uh, asking you about that you made sh that you wanted to make sure to talk about? You, you did mention something that you had an epi epiphany about your project intake mm. form. I did. Um, and I like I like epiphanies, so um, I'm happy to stay up until we run through that. It's it's a three hour conversation. Is that okay? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so <laughs> so yeah, so this is this is one thing going through this course and thinking about uh, kind of everything you talked about in it, especially that commodity bit. So I've heard a, 
a lot of the things you talked about in this course I've heard before. It wasn't the first time I heard this, like um, you are the original author of all these ideas, right? What's really nice about this course is the way you've kind of framed it in the, uh, the business we're in and kind of how that all fits together in a specific scenario, like a sales meeting, right? Uh, so I've heard things about like, um, you know, not making things a commodity, uh, asking people about their problems, uh, like even that physician um, analogy mm -hmm. we talked about. I'd read about that before I heard you talk about it in this course. But even though I had heard all those things, um, I, I sent somebody right after I went through your course the second time, I sent somebody my project inquiry form. And after I did it, I decided to go look at it again myself. I don't look at it that often. I look at like the responses when they come and I realized Everything I'm asking about in my project inquiry form, which in my process is pretty much, you can talk to me for about two minutes before I'm gonna try to get you off the phone or out of an email, or uh, if you catch me on the street, I'm gonna be trying to walk away after about two minutes. The next thing you're gonna have to go do is fill out this project discovery form, and then we can talk, right? And it's not a super long form, but what I realized is, Everything I'm asking in that entire form is just setting things up to be a commodity. It's asking how many pages they think they'll need, uh, what functionality they will need, uh, what kind of, um, what's their, their timeline on getting this done. So I'm really doing a big disservice to myself. Like I've, I've already crippled myself. If I do get them into that meeting, like I've already positioned everything as a commodity so it's something uh, i haven't done yet but something i really need to completely overhaul because i've gone through this course yeah no dude it's um so i can tell you now i have not once have i ever had a client tell me how many pages that they want on their website yeah um i tell them right so they're coming to me to give them the solution so i tell them here's what we need to achieve the result you want we need and i don't just tell them like we need you know a home page about page whatever i tell them what we need on your home page is we need a hero banner. We need this section. We need this section. I explain how the story will work, right, for conversion purposes. And so I'll go to that extent in my sales meeting um, before, like, when I when I explain the logistics, I'm telling them this is like, when, sorry, when I'm explaining the, the solution, this is what we, this is what I think you need to have. Like, we need to do this, 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 this. And they're like, oh my God, this is like amazing. You know, this guy's telling, like, that makes so much sense. Um, who does the entire, like, story of the home page in like in the meeting like oh cool you want a website great are oh, you want a home page tick you want about page right. tick like, no no we need to explain what these pages are intended to, to achieve the purpose um yeah and i've got examples of how i describe different um pages which maybe i should put that into um a bonus thing and chuck it on the course i probably will um because pages have different purposes but um yeah i'll do that actually i'll record that at some stage and chuck it in as a bonus but um they don't they don't tell me what they like stuff like that i don't care about stuff like that i'm going to tell them what they need and then they can correct me if, if they think i'm wrong but that hasn't happened um either because you know who's the expert right yeah, right. I think, so, I, think I, yeah. I set up my project. It's actually like a project inquiry form because it's it's short mm -hmm. and it's fairly informal. But my whole purpose of it was just to qualify projects really quickly. Uh, so I'm yeah. asking those questions because, you know, if it's important for them to have e-commerce and people are going to need to be able to log into some kind of membership thing. And mm -hmm. then they tell me their budget is two thousand dollars. I know this person's probably going to be a waste of my time, right? Because I know creating a solution like that uh, is going to cost a lot more. But really, by trying to like get them to scope out the, they're not in a good position to scope out the project for me. So I think I've been doing yep. a really, really horrible job of, of that first interaction with clients. So it's something I, I, I I'm I actually to about to redo my one. Um, because it has questions in there. It's, it's a bit too long. It has questions in there. It's missing questions that matter to me and has questions that don't matter to me. Um, so I'm about to redo mine. Um, so, man, if you want, like, and when I redo it, I'll just share it with you um, okay. or with everyone, I guess. We can share, I can share with the group, whatever. Um, and I'll just run it through kind of the sort of stuff that I'd be asking um, that will give me information that will judge. So it, it's the same deal, right? It's for qualification purposes. But I don't care about the features they want. I care about what, it, like, do they want to achieve something? Do they want do they want there to be impact from this site like do they want to make an extra hundred thousand dollars or an extra million dollars um like do they want to attract 
better quality of clients or what are they looking to achieve? Uh, that's what I care about because if someone's like, yeah, cool, I want a 10 page website, like they can get that anywhere. But it's like, dude, I want to get my conversion rate to 25%. Like that's something I do. Um, that is something I do. That's something I have done. Um, you know, if it's like, I want to make an extra million dollars. Yeah, cool. Like that's actually my, like my forte. Um, that's what, that's something I've done before for people. And so I can do that for you too. Um, but it's like, yeah, the 10 page thing. Like, yeah, I've done that heaps of times, but like, I'm not going to do that for you. <laughs> like, right. um, yeah, budgets are semi irrelevant to a certain degree, because again, like I mentioned, budgets are based off perceived value. So asking that early, all that does is it, it anchors their, their prices. I mentioned this in the course, I think, mm-hmm. um, if you ask about, um, price, if you ask about budget and you, all you do is like, what's your budget? And they say two grand, but you're thinking of something, you're thinking of trying to charge 20 grand. It's going to sound pretty terrible if they said two and then you're like cool what's going to cost 20 like what the f- right. i was expecting two this is ridiculous right um but if instead at the start you're like look based on what you're describing i'm thinking like this could be potentially up to forty thousand dollars but i don't think so let me like let's let's get a few more details right and they're like oh my god i was thinking two and then when you tell them 20 after they've been thinking 40 um it's like it looks a lot better and that's still the same twenty thousand dollars, but it's um it looks a lot better compared to forty than it does compared to two. Right. Um. So you know, and I mean, I'm not saying do it in that way, but um, I I try to avoid the whole budget conversation, and I try to um just focus on like what are you trying to achieve and tie it to the value of the solution. So it's like, cool. Well, you're looking at making an extra two million dollars. Great. Well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be about twenty thousand dollar project to do it in this way. Um, and if they say anything, it's like, dude, talking about two million dollars. Right. And you, you like, I mean, it's not it, like I'm if not I could turn two thousand yeah. dollars into two million dollars, I wouldn't be a web designer, dude. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Like even turning twenty into two mil is pretty pretty challenging. Right. But you know, like, um, now, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's probably well, it, right? Well, I'm gonna hold yeah. you to that. What we'll do is we'll we'll work on a, a nice uh, blog post for the admin bar talking about these project inquiry forms and maybe we can workshop some of that together. Um, nice. uh, it's a little bit w- easier for us to work uh, asynchronously than it is uh, on these yes. live calls. So uh, usually yep. you can catch me talking to Nick early in the morning or late in the evening and that's usually how it works for me. Well, I yep. do appreciate you uh, bringing that up because I did forget. Uh, forget I did want to share that story. But man, I really appreciate you coming on here. Like I said, if anybody wants to go check out the course, it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. I know nobody really believes me when I say this, but we really don't want to promote anything, especially in any kind of affiliate situation that we don't use ourselves. Uh, so uh, Nick offered me an affiliate uh, thing months ago when the course first started, and uh, I said no to all that until I finished the course. Now that I've gone through the course, uh, I, I'm more than happy to talk about this and, and answer any questions. It's really changed the way I think about a, a lot of this, obviously in a practical sense, like my inquiry form, but also just, uh, you know, in my mindset of going into these meetings, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to fare a whole lot better. So I definitely think it's worth checking out, uh, if that's something you've struggled with too. So I appreciate it, Nick. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining me on here. Uh, right. And is there anything Thanks for having me. before we go? Um, everyone, you guys are great. I enjoy talking to you and, um, I'll keep talking to you in the group. Fantastic. That works perfectly. Well, go get some sleep, my friend, and, uh, we will catch you, uh, after you wake up. Cool. All right. (laughs) All right. Bye. Bye.